Hi Year 6, I'm here to tell you about a really exciting opportunity that you all have to enter a competition. It's the Young Artists Summer Show. This is a competition which takes place every year and is an opportunity for all children studying in the UK to enter a competition for their artwork. The only qualification is that you need to be between the ages of 5 and 19, which you all are. Your art will be submitted onto the website and then it will be judged by some professional artists and people who work in the industry. I'm going to go through the information now about how you can apply and what you need to do, as well as giving you some ideas so that you're ready to get going and have a crack at this over half term. So let's get started. Right. What do you need to do? It's really, really simple. There's only three things that you need to do. You need to submit a piece of artwork that you've made using a high quality photo from Seesaw. When you submit it, you need to give it a title and then you need to write a very short blurb. That's really the only thing that you need to do. We will do the rest. We will upload it onto the website for you and enter the competition, all of that sort of thing. You just need to give us a photograph with a name and a tiny blurb. This information has come straight from the website that's running the competition. I'm just going to read it out to you so you know exactly what you're looking for. The artwork can be made using any medium. A word for materials you've used to create your piece. It can be a painting, sculpture, photograph, installation, video, drawing, or a combination of many things. There's no theme, so the artworks can be of any subject. And we don't mind when you made your artwork, so long as you were between the ages of five and 19 when you submit it. We also welcome collaborative pieces made by more than one student, a whole class, or even a whole year group. If you are doing art at GCSE A level or BTEC level, you're not, so we don't need to read that information. So to recap, it can be any medium at all. And there's no theme. I'm going to go through some examples of ideas of themes later for those of you to come up with some ideas. But if you really want to go in a different direction, you can do because there is no theme for the competition. All of the artworks are viewed and judged by a panel of artists and art professionals. There are two sets of judges, one for the artworks made by primary students and one for the secondary students. When the judges make their selections, they choose which artworks will be shown online and which will be shown at the Royal Academy. Everyone who submit arts work will be here by the end of May. So you'll find out whether or not your artwork is going to be shown online or even in the Royal Academy. There are prizes awarded for each year, each year for two inspiring artworks from each key stage. So that'd be key stage one, key stage two, key stage three, key stage four. As chosen by the president of the Royal Academy. And you can also vote for your favourite artwork in the annual People's Choice Award, uh, which is a separate competition. So there's a lot of opportunity to get your artwork out there and even a prize that you could possibly win. I'm now going to go through some of the entries from last year so that you can see what sort of things people are making their artwork out of and also what I mean by a title and a blurb. So I'm going to go through the winning entries from last year. This piece of work is called Elements. It's by a year six child. You can see it's a sculpture and the materials are just recycled materials you found around the house, paper mache and then some acrylic paints. Um, then the blurb here is explaining what the artwork is and what it represents. In this bit, you need to be really quite creative. When I look at this piece of artwork, it's not obvious to me that it's based on breakdance. And to be honest, I don't think it was obvious to Oscar when he was making it. But he's made his blurb work and he's made it seem a lot deeper than it actually is. He says, I like to break dance. My sculpture represents the sound I hear at the top, which is the funnel, the movements I make, which is the propeller at the bottom. And apparently the blank yellow sections represent the moves he hasn't learnt yet. Now, between you and me, I think when Oscar was making this sculpture, he wasn't thinking about break dancing at all. But that's the thing about art. It's got to have a story and you've got to be able to explain it. This next piece is much more topical and we can see clearly exactly what this child is doing. This is another sculpture. So this is a model which has been made out of cardboard boxes, acrylic paint and glue by another child in year six. And it's about the topic of lockdown and she's talking about how she's relieved that you can still get trains during lockdown. This is her blurb. I love trains. When mum said we can't go on the train because of lockdown, I'm autistic, so it felt like the end of the world. I begged her to get some cardboard so I could make my own to get on. This is my Gatwick Express for lockdown. I added some effects for the door buttons, engine and announcements so they're more real. Since then, I've made the Southern Rail train and I'm building a Thames link. I feel happy every day now playing with them in my garden. So this one's got a backstory, a reason why the child has chosen to create this piece of artwork. So if you're doing something that's a real object, you need to explain why you might have chosen that. The thing that's cool about this one is she's made the object so large that she can interact with it in real life. OK, you could also enter a photograph. There's two photographs I'm going to show you. This one is called non-Western still life. Still life is just a word that artists use to, rep, um, to mean like a picture or a photograph of something that they can actually see. 
Um, and then, so as you can see in this picture, it's some artfully arranged fruit and vegetables, and then we'll just read the description here. I wanted to use fruit and vegetables that represented a non-European perspective. I found these items on Peckham High Street. I think they really capture the essence of my community and the diversity in the area. So again, really plugging into what they think that the art critics and art judges would be interested in community, um, representing diversity, things like that. You wouldn't, for example, have as much success if you'd just taken a picture of an apple and said, I like apples. So think really carefully about how your blurb can supplement your artwork. Here's another photograph. You can see this one's really lovely with the um, playing of the light. Um, so you can see the way it's quite a dark room and the light is shining through that map really nicely. So this piece of work, it just says my mum holding a map of in our Airbnb in Italy whilst the sun lit it up. For this one, there's not much of a blurb, but the quality of the photograph really stands out. It's not, for example, just like a normal photograph that you might take. They've really paid attention to the way the light is interacting, um, the interaction between the light and the dark in this image, which makes it so successful. OK, you could also do something a bit more abstract. For example, this is a piece of artwork done by a year one child, and you can see they're really exploring um, the interaction of the lines on the page in charcoal. Apparently, this drawing was inspired by tubes and railways in London and the waiting people have to do for them. I'm not sure if I can see that. However, that's a blurb that works and it will get the art, um, the art critics engaging with the piece at a deeper level. Um, another piece of abstract artwork here. This is um, acrylic paint on, on a canvas um, and it's called STEM. Simplicity is really important to me. It helps to calm me. With this work, there is one strong supporting line from which others are supporting each other and yet have their own sense of direction. Again, you can see the way the blurb is really important, where you kind of have to really explain what your artwork represents, even if it's not obvious, even if your artwork is perhaps a little bit more abstract. OK, you could also perhaps do a landscape. So this is done by a year six child. It's mixed media. So it's a mixture of crayon and paint on paper. Mm -hmm. They've done it on A3 paper. Uh, so this is a lesson experimenting with perspective. The scene reminds me of where my mum is originally from. Uh, so really plugging into that whole idea of um, community or identity. It's a country mining village with stone buildings and huge pylons in the fields beyond. So it's not just a landscape. It's about identity, too. Um, this one, again, we've got this fantastic painting, acrylic on canvas. This artwork is in response to the theme of memories, narratives and collections. I used my first independent just bus journey as a starting point for the project, remembering the excitement of travelling alone for the first time. So, again, using a backstory to explain why you've chosen to do that piece of artwork, which is just a painting of what the bus looks like. But we're going into and we're plugging into those emotions and saying I'm remembering the excitement of travelling alone for the first time. So hopefully you can see that your artwork could be based on absolutely anything, so long as you've got a really nice backstory to supplement it. And don't forget, portraits can't go wrong. So this one here, you've got a portrait of a teacher and it's by a year six child and it just says, Mrs. Obi has taught me since reception. She is very kind and caring. The strength of this artwork really, really, really stands out here, done by a year six child. So in our own year group and it's A2. Uh, that means it's even bigger than an A3 piece of paper. So like two A3 pieces of paper together. So a very large portrait done in charcoal. You could also do a more abstract portrait or even a self-portrait. So this is done by a year one child. It says inspired by the work of Picasso's Blue Period. So again, you've got an abstract piece of work and you're saying it's been inspired by this famous artist. Or you could do a sort of more abstract self-portrait. This one has been done really creatively on clay tiles. So they've had these clay tiles, they've put them together and then they've painted on them with black slip. We can read the information here. This is a self-portrait inspired by my dad's love of pottery. I began by carving pictures into a pot I made by, made by my dad using the scraffito technique. I love the challenge of having only one chance to form images, unlike pencil drawing where you can rub out mistakes. So this child's used something that he's been doing at home with his dad in order to upload this self-portrait. OK, so hopefully that was a nice selection of all sorts of different kinds of artworks that you can produce. But sometimes it's a little bit tricky if you've got a wider pool of things you can draw from. So I'm going to give you some ideas now that might help you narrow your thought process. I think coming up with a really good idea will be the hardest part of this competition. So in terms of the media, like what should you use? 
it kind of really depends on what you've got at home. You could do a sketch with some pencils. If you've got charcoal, you can do a charcoal drawing, paints, clay, mixed media. That just means anything you want. You could do, combine clay and pencils and colouring pencils and pen. Or you could do a sort of junk modelling style thing where you're using recycling and painting on it, paper mache. You could even do computerised animations. You could do a cartoon. There was a really fantastic video that I couldn't show you um, on on this PowerPoint, but you can also do computerized artwork, oil pastels, photographs as well. Don't forget, there's any media is accepted. Okay, and then I thought of some ideas for a theme that might be successful in this current climate in terms of things that might really uh, appeal to the people making the decisions. So the top three are themes. So unity, togetherness, everyone working together, adversity. That means getting through difficult times or difficult periods, hopefully that you're overcoming. Community, that can plug into all sorts of different things, including identity and also self-portraits. You can never go wrong with a self-portrait. So if you want even more ideas, so if you want to enter, but you can't think of what to do, here are some ideas of some specific artworks you could do. But remember, it's completely up to you. It's an open competition. If you want ideas of themes, those ones might be quite successful. So remember, you can never go wrong with a portrait. That could be a sketch, a painting of a person, of yourself, of someone famous, of someone who you respect. Don't forget, you can also do a sort of more edgy self-portrait where you're really reflecting carefully and thinking um, a lot about um, mood and stuff like that. It could be more abstract. Abstract art is fantastic, but make sure you've got a good story to go behind it. You can't just say, oh, this is a, um, a collection of lines that looks really cool. You've got to have a story. You've got to have a reason. And then also remember that fantastic Turner inspired artwork you did. You could recreate some of that. You could do something similar. Those boat scenes, for example, were absolutely superb. Also, think about what makes this year unique from other years. What's a positive message you can find from the very challenging situation we find ourselves in at the moment? Could you in some way use the pandemic to create an artwork that is showing a positive, perhaps a light at the end of the tunnel, perhaps something that you've developed during this period? Think how you could sort of appeal to the judges by thinking of a clever message that you can get from the current climate. So basically, overall, my main messages are it can be any artwork that you like in any medium that you like. But if you're struggling for ideas, I've got those ideas on the previous slide that you can have a go at. Please, please have a go at submitting your artwork. I'm just going to remind you of what you need. You need a piece of art with a name and a blurb. That's all you need to do and upload them onto Seesaw. We will do the rest. I can't wait to see your fantastic ideas and examples. Please don't forget to upload them onto Seesaw. This is going to be a really fun and engaging half-term project for you to have a go at. Good luck, everybody.